AkronHipHop.com. This is the blog. This is the uh, website where you see videos that are concentrate on issues affecting us as, as a community. When you see me looking at black conscious, black intelligence, and of course, black, black love. love. What up, Mr. Black Love? What's going on, brother? You were speaking with your glasses off. You had to see what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I got to say, man. See what I'm saying. Hey, man, what's that on your shirt? Uh, this is Dr. Huey P. Newton, man. Doctor? Dr. Huey P. Newton. That's right. He earned his doctorate degree uh, before he left this earth. And this, but this, this is uh, this was done for image because they had the Black Panther newspaper at the time. And brother said, uh, well, a lot of people, a lot of our people still don't read. Let's put the image there. So then they they associate, oh, image. Oh, let me let me check out this paper. Let me read it. You know what I'm saying so that's what this is all about. Image. Well, talk to us about it. What we doing? What we talking uh, about today? Briefly, man. Uh, this year will mark 31 years since the murder of uh, Q.E.P. Newton. Uh, just briefly, man. I don't know how many people watching this are familiar with. Q.P. Newton, but I just want to say briefly, he was born February 17th, 1942. He was born in Monroe, Louisiana. He was not born in California. A lot of people don't know he has roots in Louisiana. He was named after Senator Huey P. Long, who was the uh, state senator of the state of Louisiana. And uh, Senator Long was anti-establishment. My brother Huey Newton uh, attended, uh, moved to Oakland, attended Merritt College. He was part of the student association they had at owner college, owner campus. And he eventually hooked up with Bobby Seale. And those two brothers basically had some ideas, man, that, uh, how to change this thing around as far as uh, uh, uplifting black people, uh, learning more about the laws. He found a loophole in the laws where they, they, they could legally carry their guns. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they formed what was called the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense in October of 1966. The name Black Panther originated down in the South, actually down in Alabama, uh, with a, uh, another... Uh, political organization using that using that symbol, but it's, it's widely associated with the Black Panther Party, based in Oakland, California. But uh, Dr. Huey P. Newton, man, he was uh, the Panther Party had a lot of programs too. They had a shoe program, they had a food bank, they had a single cell anemia program, they had a breakfast program, a lot of a lot of community based programs to help the community and improve our condition, man. Um, of course, when you start organizing your people, um, you know you become you become a target. And unfortunately, uh, you know, he didn't escape that. He was charged with the uh, murder of a police officer in 1967, I believe. Uh, they had a, two or three mistrials. He was eventually acquitted. And then two other uh, charges, after, two other murder charges after that. They say he killed uh, two other people. I don't know, you know, the details of that. But I know the trials didn't end in nothing. Sometimes it's just uh, frivolous stuff thrown out there just to get you up, just to keep you occupied in the courts with legal fees and and and, and uh distracted from from the movement but they were they uh oakland was a hotbed for uh uh just a lot of conscious activity at the time and the panther party was was no uh, was definitely not um uh, off the radar for jacob hoover and the fbi okay the uh even during that time of qp newton there was an east west division going on between the panthers you know what I'm saying even even during that time, you know what I'm saying, and all the leadership was uh, when, when Huey was in jail, Bobby Seale was out. When Bobby Seale went to jail, Huey was out. When uh, then they had Elders Cleaver, you know, dividing things, and then they had the East and West, you know, it's it just all orchestrated by somebody else. You know what I'm saying, and uh, uh, a lot of people need to know more about like read, read their books, read Huey P. News books, and read other books by the Panther Party, too. They say he died of a you keep hearing this over and over again. They say he died of a, a, a drug deal going wrong by somebody named Tyrone Robinson of the Black Gorilla family. Okay, that's one version of events. Um, local news in Oakland has said that the police have been lying. They caught the police lying a few times about who was really behind his murder. He was shot three times in the head on August 22nd, 1989. Now, according to one eyewitness, they wanted him. He, so people were trying to force him into a car, and he wouldn't go in the car. That's 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 attempted kidnapping right there. He wouldn't go along with them. Who was in the car? Who was attempting to get him in the car? I don't know. Uh, this man, Tyrone Robinson, I remember watching on YouTube him walking in the courtroom. This is a young guy. He looked he looked kind of like bewildered, like he didn't know why he was there. Uh, who knows what happened? But uh, Huey P. Newton fell on hard times. And sometimes when you were isolated or you were uh, struggling with a uh, uh, a drug addiction, that'd be the perfect time for uh, somebody to take you out. We will we'll write the narrative later. You know what I'm saying? So when you read the history books, you say, oh, he died 
oh, a drug deal going, going wrong with uh, Tyrone Robinson killed him. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. I, I don't know. But he was definitely a target. Just understand that he was a target. All the Pan police were targets. They was uh, uh, eventually, uh, you know, seized and taken out. By 1977, according to uh, uh, Zbigniew New Brzezinski, who was a national security advisor under President uh, Carter, uh, I got a memorandum he wrote. And he was talking about uh, Black Africa, Black America. But anyway, in that document uh, that came out, 1977, 1978. I can't think of the exact name of it right now. But anyway, the Black Panther Party is mentioned in that document by name. And he refers to it at that time as a defunct organization. So by the late 70s, you can say that the organization was pretty much defunct and non, uh, uh, non-threat. You got to understand a special thing about the 1970s. Uh, once the Black organizations were taken off the scene, you had a high rise in dope. 1970s was a haze decade. Everybody, everybody's, in, everybody's in the haze. You know, you're not planning nothing uh, as long as you doped up. So, you know, that, that's that's the period of the 70s. Now, all the black ones are off the scene. Now the dope is is, is, is heavy. It's, it's heavy. That's why all the all the uh, uh, the heroin dealers from New York, big time dope dealers in New York, all of them got their, had their peak, had their, uh, the highest point in their career was in, it was in the 1970s. That's a special time where, you know, the black organization was off the, off the scene and, and now we can flood, we're going to flood this thing with dope. Remember in the Black Panther movie, remember now, if you go back to see the movie that came out in 95 by Melvin Peebles, Peebles, Mario Peebles, the ultimate solution that they had, go back and see the movie, ultimate solution what they had was just to fill the community with dope. That was the ultimate solution. Once you, once you, if you always doped up, we're not worried about you. You can wave your fish. You, you can say, we're, if you always just doped up in a, in a cloud, we're not, we're not worried about you. You're not afraid. That was the ultimate solution in the, in the movie Panther, man. You know, go back, check it out. It's free on YouTube because you don't have it on DVD or something like that. But uh, Huey P. Newton, man, Dr. Huey P. Newton, learn more about him, man. Read his work, read his book. And understand what he, what he stood for, why he was threatening to the establishment. He had a, he was definitely a man with ideas and hey, man, he was, he was a threat. All right, man. Take us out of here, baby. Brother G Mac, tune in next week. Next week, I'm going to talk about, uh, check this out Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Don't be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having more shades on when I do that. All right, take us out of here, baby. Brother G Mac, peace. <laughs>